This is going to be your guide to using Cinderace in Pokemon Unite. So let's start off with the battle items where we can talk about X attack because you are an attack damage carry, otherwise known as an ADC or a ranged physical attacker, which means X attack is pure value. When it comes to other Pokemon, their scaling gets kind of weird, but if you are constantly putting out auto attacks, you are just doing 20 more auto or 20% more auto attack damage for 7 seconds, which sounds like a lot of value and it's just a strong consideration on the Cinderace. We're going to look at the abilities and the scaling and get more into the numbers in a bit but this is just something to keep on the table. I go a bit more in depth with my Greninja guide and if you're trying to come up with like an AD carry you want to play I recommend watching that video as well. Also if you enjoy it don't forget to leave a like, share with your friends, comment your thoughts down below and all of that good stuff. After that we have eject button. So the thing is, Cinderace has a very long auto attack range. It is not hard to stay safe on the Cinderace, which is why I feel Eject Button isn't that crazy on Cinderace. You can use it to escape, you can use it to like reposition and stuff, but the 70 second cooldown means there's going to be a lot of vulnerability and pretty much in any kind of high level or coordinated play, it's not going to do too much for you. Like you survive one gank or you survive one bad engage and then the call out is, Cinderace flashed down, and now you're camped, and you're going to die anyways, so that's a problem. Now, the same argument could be made for, like, all of the items where it's like, oh, no full heal, we got 40 seconds. But the extra half minute in a 10 minute game of vulnerability, just, you can exploit that for multiple ganks, or it means there's, like, there's time. It's like, hey, you can show up in 40 seconds, and that flash is still down. Or it works into, like, Dreadnought, Rotom, Zapdos. So there's just going to be less uptime on it, and that makes it a lot easier to play around. Whereas with the full heal, I think it's just a better item in general, and it gives you about as much mobility value as the eject button, because if you full heal and then you're not getting slowed, you're not getting stunned, you can just walk away. Especially if like you have a Unite move passive, so you're already like zooming around and being super fast and stuff, or other things with the Cinderace from their abilities. Yeah, like full heal just lets you do what you want. When it comes to Pokemon Unite, I find a lot more value in autonomy over a little bit of a blink that has a long cooldown. So you pop full heal, and then the Alolan Ninetales that's trying to like get you caught out, you just kick it to death. Or the Snorlax that's jumping on, you get to walk away and then kick it to death. Or you run through the block and then get a good position on the enemy's carry and then you kick them to death. So that's the thing about Cinderace, like this lets you get into position and also it means your Unite move probably isn't going to get cancelled by Stray CC. So use full heal, get around to where you want to go, your Unite move is going to go off where and how you want it and then you just get to keep on popping off. Also by using full heal to soak cooldowns of crowd control, they're not going to have it for a few more seconds. So you get a lot more just usability out of the full heal. That's my general philosophy. Sorry if I repeat myself, but some people are going to find this guide and not other guides. So it's really good to just explain it every time and how it works for that Pokemon. Next up, we have the recommended items. So I used to recommend, you know, Razor Claw with the Scope Lens, just like the most crit possible, but it doesn't really feel that efficient. And Cinderace has a, like a lot of interesting stuff in its kit to where you have built-in lifesteal. So as you level up, you get lifesteal, which means if you're critting, you're healing a lot, or if you're just like doing rapid auto attacks, still gonna be healing. So it means you're actually a bit tankier than you would expect. And the idea behind Focus Band is that it keeps you in the fight longer, so doing more damage for a longer amount of time is just better than the increased DPS from the Razor Claw. And the Razor Claw isn't even that much, especially when we get into Cinderace's stats. So Cinderace has the Blaze passive. When at half hit points or less, critical hit rate is increased by 10%, and basic attack speed is increased by 20%. So you are going to be getting off a lot of auto attacks, which also makes the case for X attack stronger on the Cinderace compared to the Greninja. And then at level 9, you get your insane power spike of 30% crit rate, which means we're going from 30% to 40% in passive, to 46% with the scope lens, and then the difference with Razor Claw is 46 to 48%. Doesn't really feel like that much of a percentage increase or that it really matters. You pretty much have 50% crit rate on the Cinderace when you're below half, but even going like 36 versus 38.1%. Not really that crazy, and the DPS on the Razor Claw is less than the effective healing and effective health and tankiness that you get from the Focus Band. So it kind of comes down to a 
math versus preference argument if you know that you're safe and you feel like focus band isn't doing anything for you then yeah the razor claw is going to be pretty awesome because you're going to be running around kicking getting bonus damage maybe that two percent crit matters because we don't know how the rng goes so you just roll it and maybe that does something also 15 base attack is going to be nice as for muscle band i feel like focus band always beats out the muscle band and the attack speed is so small compared to like all the other attack speed you're getting through levels through your passive through your night move to where the muscle band like attack speed doesn't matter and then it comes down to the three percent damage but Cinderace actually has some interesting stuff in its kit to where Pyroball is now viable. So if you kick a couple of people and like Pyroball for a thousand dollars or a thousand dollars for a thousand damage to start off the fight, well, that means they're starting off at a thousand less damage. So you've immediately made your muscle band less efficient. Or if they have a Snorlax diving in, providing crowd control, a Wigglytuff just kind of running in, giving you space to just play around with and then run around and kick people, well, Every bit of damage that comes in before you start attacking or as you're attacking makes the muscle band just less efficient. So I feel like with the focus band, there's just going to be more value there. Now, focus band does have a long cooldown, but I'm just thinking about in the focus band, like let's say two Cinderace are running at each other. One has focus band, one has muscle band. The muscle band is actually just going to get less and less effective, even as the focus band is proccing, because that's activating at around 20% of your health. So you're going from like 20% to 30%. And then, like, the muscle band is only doing 3% damage based off of that amount. And then, like, they knock it down, it just heals back up. So the healing is just going to be much more powerful than muscle band, even from full health. But then it just drops off more and more throughout the game. Also, if the opponent's Pokemon, they have a shield from Blissey, Eldegoss, Buddy Barrier, Unite move, depending on what hit point they use it at is when that damage is being calculated. So a Pokemon that's at 40% hit points with... 100% effective health from the Buddy Barrier shielding and Unite move shielding, you're only going to be basing damage off of that 40% of their base health, so it just doesn't have that much effectiveness for me. There could also maybe even be an argument that attack weight could be better than the Focus Band, or like could be better than the Razor Claw if you're getting rid of Focus Band because of all like all the critting and scaling that you have. Also, your bonus attack speed while in the Blaze passive. So. It, it's it's a very messy thing when every fight is going to be different every auto attack pattern kiting dancing around play styles are going to be different but again like that just seems like a winning kit on any ad carry let's talk about the basic attacks so third auto attack is boosted dealing increased damage and blaze is where cinderace gets complicated when the pokemon uses a move its next basic attack becomes a boost attack so it's something to be aware of for the most optimal DPS. Now you don't have to 100% always be perfect on it, but if you go attack, attack, boost attack, ability, boost attack, 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 boost attack, ability, etc., then you're just going to have more DPS. Also, this does naturally synergize with the Razor Claw, but as we broke it down, like even without the melee slowing passive, Razor Claw is good little bits of extra damage. But your crit scaling is already so naturally high, the 2% doesn't matter, and then, again, the math and numbers start to break down. But the cooldown on Razor Claw does play nice with, like, Cinderace's abilities. Let's get into Blaze a bit more. When the Pokemon hits an opposing Pokemon with a basic attack or move, a Cinder is placed on that opposing Pokemon. Attacking Cindered opposing Pokemon a certain number of times will cause the Cinder to flare, dealing damage to the opposing Pokemon. When the Pokemon with this ability is at half health or less, critical hit rate and basic attack speed are increased for a short time. Now, we don't have the exact specifics on the trigger, because it's not like, oh, as long as you're just permanently under 50%, you're just always getting those effects. And also, like, what happens if you go above 50% and then back below it? Or, like, what the cooldown is or the trigger on Blaze? Just know that you get kind of nuts once you drop below half, and if you're just synergizing that with Focus Band and your Unite move, then I guess the cooldown and duration doesn't really matter that much, because you're just hard popping off. Um, after that, we can go back to Pokemon Unite DB and really look at what's going on here. So, Flare is hard scaling into the late game. As you can see right here, 0.6% enemy max, max hit points. So, you need to stack it and they do what seems like no damage. However, level minus one. So, at level 11, that now becomes 10.6% enemy max hit points as just bonus damage. And it's max hit points, so it's better than, like, remaining or missing hit points. It's just nuts on the Cinderace. And as we get more into Cinderace's abilities, Cinderace shows to also be, like, an assassin AD carry, 
but better than Greninja, which is weird. So we have the basic attack becoming boosted, 130% attack, doing like cinder stacks and all that fun stuff. And then we can talk about the moveset. So I think everything has been nerfed around the Pyroball, and Pyroball has been buffed so much that it is the best option. Just look at that, 253% attack on a 5 second cooldown, which also becomes lower after you use your night move, so it becomes a 4 second cooldown, and then 24, 24 times level. So again, level 11 means that you're getting 240 damage, plus 600 damage, plus 253 attack. Uh, we can talk about the power spikes here in a bit, but it's like, yeah, 264 attack, shenanigans, it's just so much damage. Like. You are pyroballing through an enemy team for like a thousand damage on an ability before you even get into crazy auto attacks and stuff like that. Uh, things to play around at level 5, that's when you get your first chunk of critical hit rate. At level 9 is when you get the next chunk, you have lifesteal. Level 13 is when you just get a little bit of extra lifesteal. And also move upgrades apply at whatever levels they apply at. So things to take into consideration. Um, Pyroball also has good synergy with your mobility move. So reduces the cooldown of flame charge or faint when the move hits. It's 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 just nasty. Like you lead in from very long ranged, very high damage, and then you just follow that up with auto attacks. You use your mobility move to kite it out even better. Get another powerball, and if you hit more than one, per even if you hit one person with powerball, it's already nasty. If you hit more than one person, it's absurd amounts of value. Um, also you have like burning them and then reducing attack and special attacks. You get a little bit of extra damage on the burn tick, which is kind of interesting. Blaze kick. I think blaze kick is still somewhat viable and maybe it's depending on team composition and I can't tell you like, oh, if you see exactly this on the enemy team and you have exactly this on your ally team, then that's the pick for blaze kick over powerball. I think powerball is kind of the default, but if you like look at what blaze kick offers, then maybe there's something here. So Cinderace performs a flying kick, shoving, burning, and critting enemies hit. In addition, Cinderace is immune to hindrances while using the move. So it's really good at absorbing abilities, like a really telegraphed crowd control ability. You just want to blaze kick onto them. So when used perfectly, blaze kick gives an incredible amount of utility, and also the disruption inside of blaze kick can be very powerful, so it gives you the advantage, and then at level 11, increases Cinderace's basic attack speed for a short time. So I mean, you just do that, and then you like, giga kick them, and they just go away. So blaze kick, it can be very disruptive, very annoying, very repositioning. Uh, get you in there more than you would like in some situations like powerball is the super long range You just eventually destroy them kind of move blaze kick is get in there and win the fight has its own risks But with the focus band you're getting some mileage out of that and also blaze kick is an ability so immediately follows up into a Boosted attack and then you get your passive going on and it gets kind of nuts then we have flame charge so cinderace charges forward damaging all enemies hit you don't want to be charging into people you want to use flame charge to maneuver and reposition in the fight if someone gets too close to you you back off a bit and then while they're trying to dash back or like catch up to you you're just kicking them in the face and hoping they go away also there's just like a lot of synergy you blaze kick someone you get more distance on them then you have attack speed the next boost attack after this move ends also slows enemies hit so you go away get the boost on them they're slow so they're getting onto you slower and less uh the damage as you can see the damage does not matter here you don't want to be hitting people with the flame charge if it just happens to go that way that's fine but again there's just no damage in landing it you need to use it as a pure dash mobility get away kind of move which also lessens the value of flash on the cinderace because you're already getting a lot out of the flame charge on a five second cooldown Faint, though, also has a lot to it. Cinderace dodges, increasing movement speed and becoming briefly invincible. You are invincible for one second. And that can make a lot of difference, especially if you like you just kind of faint. Like that's that's why the Blaze Kick Faint was the best moveset for a while until Faint and Blaze Kick got nerfed so much and Pyro Ball got buffed into it to where you can't ignore it. But it's like Blaze Kick, hit him, hit him, hit him, they get back to you, you faint away. There's nothing they can do. After dodging, the next three basic attacks restore hit points equal to 30% of the attack. So you go from 15% lifesteal to a bonus 30% on the next three hits. And it's 30% of the attack. So of those crit, you're getting even more healing. And again, like this inside of a buddy barrier after you use your night move, 
this with focus ban proccing, it makes it to where, like, Cinderace just wins duels. It wins 2v1s with it, or 1v2s with this, where Cinderace is the one. To where it's like, now it's just, it's just too much damage, it's too much slipperiness, and it can be very annoying to do anything about. But also, it's a 13 second cooldown, so you get multiple flame charges. You know, it's like, Pyro Ball, hit him, flame charge, Pyro Ball, flame charge, like... That can also just move around and be nasty and have burst inside the Pyro Ball. But I do think that it's more even between Faint and Flame Charge versus the Pyro Ball and Blaze Kick. Just Pyro Ball is the one you want to lean on more often. Flame Charge Faint. Again, it's kind of like look at the enemy team and figure it out. If they have a lot of aimed abilities that you can faint out of, it's really nice. Also, like consider if they have a Lucario. Well, if you just faint the extreme speed and Lucario doesn't get the reset... Now you just get to kick it, and Lucario can't really do anything about it. And since you have crits and stuff, you're just winning the straight-up auto-attack duel. So that could be very beneficial for the Cinderace. Uh, if you go Flame Charge, then, like, Lucario can wait and can, like, charge into the same point. Or you just use Flame Charge to Juke as well. Just that Faint is the harder ankle-breaking Juke. And it does have value. Also, using it to get out of Unite moves. Like, this just makes you invincible. You can still get caught inside of the Flame Charge. So... Like, if, if the perfect faint play just makes you uncounterable, and Pyro Ball reducing faint cooldown, also cool. Uh, Pyro, yeah, it, there's just a lot of weirdness when it comes to, like, breaking down the best moveset on Cinderace. I think it's good that we actually don't have the best only pick this moveset on some Pokemon. So, it comes down to preference, playstyle, and what just feels better for you. So, that's something to take into consideration. And then, Blazing Bicycle Kick has a lot going on here, but it's an absolutely disgusting Unite move. It is one of the best in the game. So you have insanely long range, and it's a sure hit Unite move, dealing damage in an area of effect as well, applies two stacks of Cinder on the target, deals additional damage if the target is burning, consume all stacks of Cinder for increased damage multiplier, D deals the most damage at three stacks of Cinder, not the max of four, because of how it applies and like consumes and stuff, and then deals additional execute damage equal to 14% of the enemy's remaining hit points. Does it actually talk about the execute damage on the um on the actual page? Increase like okay, deals damage opposing Pokemon in the area effect. Unite move also increases user's movement speed for a short time when it hits. And that's it. So if you don't know about the execute damage. You don't know, but that's why, this is why it steals Dreadnought. This is why it steals Zapdos. This is why all of a sudden you're like, ah, oh, yeah, Unite move isn't going to do that much damage. Like, this is still a crazy amount of base damage. Like, 670, and then, like, at level 9, you're still adding, like, over 100 into that. And then 250% attack? So, like, the Unite move itself is doing over 1,000 damage, but you're like, I, I can survive that. And then the 14% execute damage is also crazy. Uh, Unite DB doesn't talk about the movement speed, but you get more movement speed on top of the movement speed you get from using Unite move at base. Like, just the, the regular Unite move giving you 20% cooldown reduction, some attack speed, some movement speed. So you're getting more movement speed on top of that, and depending on when you use it, now you're hiding in Blaze passive with a buddy barrier, and you're unstoppable at that point. So you use it to finish off a fight, KO someone. I mean, you can even point blanket on someone that you're already charging Blaze on, and just ruin people's day. Like, it, it is the ultimate team fight winning Unite move when used properly and then followed up on with just the highest potential AD carry in the game. And that's why I mean, like, Cinderace is somehow a better assassin than Greninja because of this missing hit points and then this proc. So also, if it's con consuming Cinder, depending on how many stacks they have, you're getting bonus damage of Cinder, you're getting the flare proc, and then you're also getting the execute damage on the Unite move. Yikes. Now, as we get into game, I do want to make my personal note that I feel that Cinderace is a better jungler and better overall carry than the Greninja. And this is where things get kind of weird because you do have a very slow jungle clear. And even though you can flame charge over the wall, Ember is just more damage and it's going to give you a more reliable setup into this. Um, also, using attack or X attack to improve your jungle clear is a good idea because the faster you take out Ludicolo, the faster you're able to take out other jungle Pokemon. Uh, don't low sweep away from where you need to go, and then everything else should be pretty good. So do that, dash through, don't get knocked up, take out the Pokemon, go through your clear, and then you're going to be pretty set up. So yeah, level 5, that's when you do get into some extra crit. So 20% crit, uh, take advantage of that, utilize it, 
working around this passive is also going to give a lot of value to the uh, Cinderace. And the higher you get into the levels, the more you flare, the more you do things, it's even better. Using Low Sweep as a follow-up or engage tool, more so than the damage similar to the Flame Charge is where you want to be. And yeah, you can just kind of be here, be ready for a gank, counter gank, Vespaquin, shenanigans, following up on a people, and then you kick, 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 have a good time. Now, Cinderace has a really weird upgrade pattern compared to other Pokemon because you get your first move upgrade at level 7 when you evolve. And then you get your second move upgrade at level 8, and then you get your Unite move at level 9. So, suddenly you just turn online super hard, which is also why I feel the jungle is better for the uh, Cinderace. Because, like, oh, now you come out of jungle at level 8, getting into Dreadnought potentially level 9 if like things go cr pretty crazy like the ultimate dream is level 9 unite move as a jungler you don't always get it level 8 is pretty reliable and by then you're like you're cinderace and you have all your moves and you're doing all kinds of crazy stuff so yeah it's like pyro ball flame charge positioning hit 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 cooldowns are happening cool all kinds of fun stuff and then like you're just doing this crazy auto attack range and going into crits bonus damage especially when we get to level 9 your full potential is realized on the everything just everything about cinderace becomes crazy don't let the flame charge auto target you into like uh, an enemy pokemon because that's kind of bad like i said the damage here doesn't matter like 270 our, our auto attacks are just completely shredding people at that point so that's when like you just move around and whatnot flame charge up powerball down gg easy and then X attack and stuff inside of a fight. Like, this is the ultimate fantasy. This is the true AD carry. You are just raining almost burst ability levels of damage from, from range. It's nasty. And now I want to talk about the targeting on the Cinderace, because for Greninja, I recommend closest. Greninja is just best putting out auto attacks, getting damage, and then waiting for the opportunity to kind of get into melee range, start popping off on the surf, start popping off on the melee empowered auto attacks and stuff. And you don't have to worry about targeting too much as long as you're just there cleaning up the fights. But Cinderace's ranged auto attack damage is so insane. And those crits are so valuable. And getting Cinder is so nasty on so many Pokemon. Making sure like you're just getting the big Pyro Ball through there. Like everything about Cinderace is, is so, so much stronger than Greninja. I think you need much better targeting for the opponent. So it's like if you're just hitting the closest, it could be the support. It could be the tank. And while hurting them does have value, it doesn't have as much value as just out DPSing their DPS while you're in an untouchable range. So lowest hit point value is mostly going to get you on the target that you're looking for more often than not. Like, if you want to be an okay Cinderace, just good, kinda decent, then yeah, you can go for a lowest targeting, and sometimes that is the tank. Everyone else is behind him, you're at like the very tip of your range getting these auto attacks, that's fine. Maybe you're kind of ignoring people, weaving around, you have know, flame charge, dashing, and then setting up onto like a new target or something like that. Alright, that's good, and then you're still getting that crazy damage across. But I think the best way to use Cinderace, like if you want to be a really good Cinderace, you need to use the lock-on icon. Um, I don't like it personally. I think it's messy. I take it. I think it takes up too much of the screen. It looks like they made it a bit smaller though. Like it's it's more manageable now. It seems like they made it a little better. Also, it works different on mobile. So mobile, you just like tap it and then you stay locked on to an enemy. What I don't like about this is if someone goes into a bush, you drop it on them and then you have to like reassign your target. But if you're twin sticking like the ultimate control on Cinderace, yeah, then you're absolutely nuts. Then you're insane. So what you want to do with the targeting is you want to have it selected on like the highest, most valuable member of the enemy team. And then that's what you want to go for. That's how you want to do it. But oh my goodness, that, uh, that's also burst. That's also crazy. So I, 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 I don't like it. I don't like if someone breaks line of sight or they go out of range, you have to like reacquire them or something. So if you get like really cracked, you get really good at using it, you have mastered it, then I think that's going to, I think on Cinderace, it provides more value than any other Pokemon in the game. Because you want to use your mobility tool to stay safe from everyone else while you're just auto-targeting and critting the most valuable player on their team. Also letting some Pyro Balls find their way in there, doing some crazy stuff like that. And then when it comes to your night move usage, uh, that's also where the controls get a little more interesting. Because the range on your Unite move is ridiculous. I mean, you can snipe Zapdos from uh, not quite there, like you need to make sure you lock on the target and then you can see like it just does some crazy stuff. And that's when you get more movement speed, more attack speed, uh, potential like blaze proc or something, buddy barrier, 
all kinds of that ridiculousness. And then Cinderace is just out there being Cinderace. Also, you can attack Zapdos over the pit. Balanced, fair. So that's like your steel potential. Same thing, fireball. Same thing on the unite move. Oh, don't do that. Don't don't go in and int into the Zapdos. But like, yeah, then you can just straight onto it. It does. It KOs Zapdos from that range. So again, the X cube damage being crazy. Um, if you get some auto attacks onto Zapdos before you try to steal it, because you're doing bonus damage off of the uh, blaze stacks, it's just it's just nasty. So. There's a lot of different ways of stealing with Cinderace, and that's how Cinderace works. Also, you have camera follows moves. Like, so if you just use it, it kind of shows you the max range with your move. It's it's not too much different on your night move, and Pyroball, like, doesn't do the follow too much unless you go down. So I don't think it's as important for the camera following moves, but it's kind of like showing off that there is some range play. You need to make sure that you're quickly acquiring the right target with your Unite move to go for the steal or like that giga long range snipe inside of a team fight. If you're doing that successfully, then yeah, you're just winning games on Cinderace. And then after that, as long as you have the correct auto attack prioritization, while like that's the thing, like the game plays itself. You just select a target and then you're auto attacking around them. And then your only goal is to dodge skill shots from there. Like just dodge crowd control, pop that full heal, depending on like if you're using X attack or not. And then you are free to do whatever you want to the opponent from there. Also the benefits of faint, etc. And then kicking absurd damage power balls into the enemy team. And that's going to be the Cinderace. So, yeah, mostly, mostly just what I said. You have, to, you have to master the wheel. If you want to be the best Cinderace, the most unstoppable player, you have to master the uh, targeting icon. And if not, you can still be rather successful on Cinderace. But the sooner you deal with it and the sooner you pick it up and, like, get really good at not dropping targets with the uh, targeting wheel, then you're just going to be a better Cinderace player forever, pretty much. And that's going to be a really good thing. If you don't like the play style or you want to like be more of an in there playmaker but still an AD carry then that's when you might consider picking up the Greninja because you just do closest on Greninja and you just run at targets and eventually they die while also being kind of safe with DPS and you're going to be alright. I have a guide on Greninja but that's going to be it for the Cinderace. So guys enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.